Hey folks, welcome back to another What's In There video with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little guy right here. Uh, the Chosen Axes, a faction warband expansion for Warhammer Underworld Shadespire. And in my fervor of getting ready for Gamma and MeepleCon, I threw away the boxes already. That's why there's just this picture over here. So I apologize for that. It was a little bit of a brain fart for me, but hey, we'll get over it, right? Well, basically what I'm going to do here is just show you what you're going to get in this box. And, I, and I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. I'm going to show you everything, every single card. Hopefully this will just give you a, more information to make the determination of whether or not this is going to be a war band that you're going to want to purchase and add to your Shadespire collection. So without further ado, let's get down to the table and take a look. Now the Chosen Axes are comprised of four different dwarf models. The first one is the leader, Fuel Grimnir. And uh, he is a pretty nasty nasty uh, guy here. He has what is called the Latch Key Axe and uh, deals three damage, so it's pretty nasty. We'll go over his uh, statistics in just a few moments, but right now we're just showing off the model. Uh, joining him are uh, his compatriots, the first of which is Vol Oric Bane. Uh, so he is the Bane of Orcs, I would imagine that last name means. He has a great axe and uh, he does a lot of uh, pretty neat damage as well. Uh, the third part of their cohort is Mad Magrim. And Mad Magrim is uh, pretty cool. He's got some fire steel axes. Uh, he actually rolls three dice to attack. His axes don't do a whole lot of damage, but he does give you a pretty good uh, probability of hitting. And then finally, we have Tefk Flamebearer. And Tefk is a pretty nifty individual. He actually has flaming axes once he becomes inspired. So uh, that's a pretty cool thing as well. So let's go ahead and get to their cards and uh, see what these guys do. Now Grimnir here is the leader of the Chosen Axes, and as you can see here, he has a melee attack that rolls two dice, and you're looking for hammers, and it does three damage. That latch key axe is pretty nasty. Uh, now, he can move two, so he's a little slow, but he, and he rolls one defensive die looking for shields. He has four hit points, though, off... Uh, the bat. Now his inspired trigger says that this fighter holds an objective at the end of the action phase. So that's uh, pretty simple, I guess you could say. Uh, you don't have to do any damage, you don't have to be attacked with some of the other factions that uh, uh, we've seen. Uh, so that's pretty easy. When he does become inspired, he becomes a little tougher. He has five health now. He actually moves three, so he moves a little bit faster. And his blazing latch key axe, which is pretty cool, uh, does four damage instead of three. So you definitely want him uh, inspired as soon as possible. Some of his restricted upgrades are, first of all, Grimnir's speed. He gets move plus two. So uh, if he's inspired and moving plus two, he's going to be moving five uh, on the <laughs> on his movements. So that's covering a lot of ground uh, with those little legs. Now, uh, he also has Grim's, Grimnir's Fortitude, which gives him plus one defense. So he's always blocking at least one hit, which makes him harder to hit if you get that upgrade on him. And then finally, he has Grimnir's Blessing, which is a reaction upgrade. And it says during an attack, action, or ploy that would take Grimnir out of action, roll a defense dice. If you roll a shield, the damage suffered by this fighter is completely ignored. So again, these are really nasty upgrades that you want to get on Grimnir as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, and they're really neat. Vol Oric Bane is probably my favorite of the cohort as far as uh, what he does, and uh, one of his upgrades is actually why he's my favorite, but we'll get to that in just a few moments. His uh, attack from the Great Axe is a melee attack, and uh, he is also going to be rolling two dice looking for hammers, and his basic attack does two damage if it is successful. He moves two, again, pretty slow. He's rolling one defense dice looking for shields, and he has three hit points 
off the bat. He has, of course, the same Inspire trigger as the rest of them. And when he becomes Inspired, just like the other guys, he gets a little tougher. He moves a little faster, he has more hit points, and his attack damage is uh, greater. So again, you want to get these guys Inspired as well. Additionally, Vol here also has that Knockback 1 ability on his attack if he does become Inspired. Uh, one of his uh, restricted upgrades is Great Swing. Uh, so his attack profile uh, doesn't change as far as the damage is concerned on his uninspired side, but it does say targets all adjacent enemy fighters roll for each. So it's not just one-on-one -on -one at that point. He is attacking anybody that's adjacent to him, which is pretty nasty. And the upgrade that I like the most is his War Song upgrade, which is really cool because this fighter is considered to be two supporting fighters when they support rather than just one. So I really like his ability. It really helps his teammates be a little bit more effective. Mad Magrum is a pretty neat fighter as well. He has these fire steel axes that are rolling three dice, although he is looking for swords. And it's a, it is a melee attack and they only do one damage, but the probability of you doing one damage on those three dice is a little bit higher than the rest of his uh, compatriots here. He is moving two as normal and uh, rolling one defense die, getting looking for shields, and then he has three hit points to begin with. Uh, when he becomes inspired, however, uh, he's still rolling those three white dice, but they're doing two damage on a successful hit instead of just one. And uh, he's moving faster at three, still rolling that one defense die, but he also has more health as well. Now, with Scorching Axes, uh, this is really cool. He says you can re-roll one attack dice each time this fighter makes this attack action. So if you're using this attack profile, you can re-roll one attack dice. So uh, he's rolling three, which gives you a higher probability of hitting, and he's able to re-roll one attack dice. So again, that's just really uh, a neat combination of things that are going on. As far as his restricted upgrades here, first of all, Flurry of Blows. Uh, this one, it just gives him a different attack profile that he can use, rolling three dice and uh, getting two attack. Then also he has Returning Axe. This is a really cool ability as well because it gives his attack profile, his basic attack profile, uh, a range of three. He's only rolling two dice, which is not as good, but he is scoring one damage. But additionally, if you roll a critical hit, this attack's action has plus one damage. So that's a really cool ability. He's throwing his axes uh, within the fight as well. Makes him a really neat, diverse character. And last but definitely not least, we have Tefk Flamebearer. He has two different attack profiles that he can use. Uh, he has his uh, Brazier Axe, uh, which is one uh, melee, of course, two dice rolling looking for axes. He does two damage. And then the Fire Steel Axe here, he has, uh, of course, it's melee. He rolls three dice looking for one. So higher probability of hitting, less damage. A little bit less probability of hitting, more damage. He's moving two and uh, has a wounds of three. And if he becomes inspired, uh, he has blazing axes, uh, which are melee, rolling three dice, and on a successful hit, scoring three damage. Uh, he moves a little bit faster, has more hit points, and on top of this, his Blazing Axis profile says that if you roll at least one critical hit this attack, the action also gains cleave. So that's really cool as well. His uh, restricted upgrades are, first of all, Defiant Strike, which is a reaction ability. Gives you this profile, and it says, During an attack action that succeeds against this fighter, this fighter cannot be driven back and makes this attack action, it must target the person who attacked him. So that's really cool. If he gets hit and he has this ability, he can react with a counterattack. We're rolling three dice and scoring possibly one damage. Uh, 
And then finally, he also has brute strength. And so basically, this attack action, this fighter's attack actions gain knockback plus one. So again, these guys are tough, they're gritty. Let's get to some of their uh, faction-specific ploys. Now, I know I said we were going to get to their faction-specific ploys, but they do have one more upgrade that is faction-specific, and that is called Activated Runes. So this can be put on any of the four fighters that come in the Chosen Axes, and it basically gives them the ability that each time they make an attack, you can reroll one die. So that's pretty cool. I like that effect um, a lot. Now, some of those ploy cards, I won't go over all of them, but uh, I'll explain a couple of them that, that really kind of uh, strike my fancy, and then we'll just show you the rest of them. First of all, we have Living Wall here. It says, choose two friendly fighters and push them each uh, one space, uh, and they have to still be adjacent afterwards. So I like that. Uh, I've used that in a game, and it's really effective. It's really cool ability. Uh, we also have here, we shall not be moved. So friendly fighters holding objectives cannot be driven back by the first attack action of the next activation. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have Urgold Boon. Uh, this one, choose a friendly fighter and roll a defense die one. Uh, on a roll of a shield or a critical, you can remove two wound tokens from them. Otherwise, you just remove one wound token. So that's pretty cool that they have that healing ability. Uh, Indomitable. Uh, basically gives them the, uh, the uh, ability of the first friendly fighters that suffers damage in the next activation. Uh, they only suffer one damage instead of whatever the attack would have levied against them. Uh, there is also Berserk Fury. That's pretty cool. Um, Oath Sworn, uh, which is a reaction. It says, play this after a friendly fighter's action uh, that fails. The fighter can make another attack action that targets this the same fighter. So that's pretty cool. Uh, Slaying Blow. If the first attack action in the next activation is a critical hit, double its damage characteristic. Really neat. Piercing Stare. This is one of my favorite ones. It's really funny. It says, choose an enemy fighter. They cannot make an attack action or a charge action in the next activation, so they can only move. <laughs> That's funny. I just li I like that a lot. The Earth Shakes. This is a, one of my uh, my favorite ploys in there as well. It says, choose a fighter and push them one hex. And then there's also Treasure Lust. Choose a friendly fighter and push them up to three hexes. They must end holding an objective. So again, I love the dwarven feel that uh, these ploy cards have, and I, I just really enjoy them a lot. So now we'll go over some of the faction-specific objective cards. First of all, Hoarders. It, scores, it says, score in the end phase if all of your fighters and no enemy fighters are holding objectives. So if all of the dwarfs are holding objectives and none of the enemy's fighters are holding objectives, you can score two victory points. Uh, ferocious Charge, score this immediately if a friendly fighter takes an enemy fighter out of action with the charge action. I've used this one to a, a great ability too. You just have to choose the right time to uh, strike. A Claim Retaken, score this in the end phase if a friendly fighter holds an objective that an enemy enemy fighter held at the beginning of the preceding action phase. So that's pretty neat too. We're taking back what's ours. Um, a Grim Promise. Score this in an end phase if your warband took an enemy leader out of action in the preceding action phase. Uh, Fury of the Lodge. Uh, score this in an end phase if all of your surviving fighters, at least three of them, uh, made a charge action in uh, the preceding phase. So if you still have all four of your guys out there, all four of them would have to do it. But if you only have three, you can still score this one. So that's pretty neat as well. Uh, the Scion of Grimnir. Uh, score this immediately if your leader takes out an enemy fighter. Uh, honest Opponent. This is pretty cool too, because they have a really they have a lot of cool ploys to play. But if you choose not to play any ploys, it says score in the end phase if you played no ploy cards during the preceding action phase. So that's that's neat. I like that. And then Trapped, that's pretty cool. Score this immediately if an enemy fighter takes damage from a friendly fighter's attack action because they cannot be driven back. And then it says, for the Urgold. Uh, let's see, score this at the end phase if all of your surviving fighters, at least three of them, are inspired. So that's, that's pretty neat too. Oath, still to fulfill. 
uh, it says score this in, in the third end phase if none of your fighters are out of action. So that's pretty cool. It gives you three points. And then finally, unstoppable advance. Score this in an end phase if all your surviving fighters are in enemy territory. I love the artwork here. He's like, you're dead. And you get to score two victory points there. So great faction specific cards in my opinion. And then just real quickly here, I'll show you the other uh, ploys and upgrade cards that come in that are actually generic factions. You can put them in any faction deck. So here we go. And then finally, some of the generic faction objective cards. So there you have it, the Chosen Axes for Warhammer Underworld's Shade Spire. This is a really cool faction. I, I'm a sucker for dwarves anyway. And on top of that, these are really cool dwarves. I love the warrior feeling that these guys have. They're not jewelers. Uh, they're not armorers. They are fighters. Uh, but they still want that shiny stuff too. So I like it. It, it was a really fun faction to play. Um, so, I, my, But my main thing here is to show you guys what's coming in the box so you can make a better decision on whether or not it's going to be something you're going to want to purchase. I really think it's a great faction. Uh, it's one of my favorites so far. Um, I don't know if, they're, if I like them more than the Oryx, Iron Claws uh oryx i don't know we'll see uh, i have to play it some more but really do enjoy the faction great models great detail a lot of good things here but ultimately you have to make the decision on whether or not you're going to pull the trigger on purchasing well that's it for this uh session this edition of what's in there we'll see you guys on the flip side